it's no secret that I, I hate bass players with a passion. And not necessarily for what they do musically and any of that business, just just because of, of who they are as humans most of the time. For those of you who happen to be amazing as humans, uh, I apologize ahead of time, or maybe after the fact, whatever you, you look at it. Anyway, one of the reasons I hate bass players is because they don't let me distort their basses enough. And this is something that I, I find, especially because they use basses that are um, have no definition or clarity or whatever. But... Anyway, I don't have to uh, hate my synth basses because they don't complain when I do what I need to do to get them to do what I need to do. Now, so let me give you an example. I was mixing a song that we had uh, thrown together fast. This electronic stuff we always do fast, I, th I guess because we can. That, that disposable nature of it um, excites me a little bit. But I got a bass here, which was, it was some preset, I think. Actually, I think it's the default uh, initial sound in silence. And in context, it was kind of mean and awesome. Let's hear it. Yeah, pretty nasty. Pretty good. The problem is I couldn't hear the damn thing. Uh, the low end on that's a little bit monstrous. And uh, I don't in my headphones, it's not really a, a rump shaker. Whoa, man, my body's falling apart. Anyway, <laughs> in my headphones, it's not a... Uh, uh, well, I guess I'll stick with rum shaker, but uh, on my my monitors for sure it was it was much it was a bit too much, and so I had to turn it down a little bit. But then I couldn't hear it. In other words, I didn't have enough harmonic stuff. So let's hear it in context so you can tell what I'm talking about. Uh, here we go. And it's virtually inaudible there. And uh, again, that's kind of one of those issues with small speakers type stuff. I didn't want this dominating. I just wanted it in there. That's another factor. I didn't really want gigantic bass because I'm doing that later in the song. So it was kind of a tricky deal. But what I figured out was playing around with just in silent, which this I'm not. This could, could have just as easily been done in Cubase with audio type plugins. So don't feel like, oh, we're just doing synthy stuff. I don't care about these things. Yeah, I wouldn't either if, you know, if I was a different guy, but a different world. But this has real value. All I did is I used a bit crusher, which reduces the bits down. And I went through all their different distortion types down here. And none of them did it what I was looking for but bit crusher. Now, so I turned that on. Now let's hear it in context. Now, and again, this is probably less acceptable in, in metal and, and other uh, less uh, tolerating genres. But here in Synthland, having a zzz on top of a bass is, um, you know, have your fun. No one's going to say a thing. Maybe I need to change my bass so I do piss somebody off. Anyway, that's another deal. But today, I, I that uh, completely solved my problem of getting that bass to, to do something and be in there. And, and that's something we call masking, and I've probably co covered it elsewhere, but I just found a, a, an obvious illustration here where a bass went from being just not even there to being exactly what I wanted just by screwing it up. And again, let me uh, show you this so solo so you can get the, a perspective for how much it sometimes takes, how much processing it sometimes takes to get bass to cut through a mix. I would uh, rate it somewhere between... Uh, ludicrous and absurd. Okay, because again, the, the original bass was already pretty nasty. It had harmonic content for sure, like quite a bit of it. So here, anyway, here we go. Okay, now let me actually... It almost sounds like that's the distorted one. It's not. Then I did this. And up this loud without my two bus compressors and whatnot pushing it down, it really almost seems like it is too much. And that's my whole point. So for you rock and metal guys, this stuff, the same exact concept applies. There's different ways to go about doing it, and we'll cover that in other videos. But I guess the overall lesson here is not to be shy about 
getting any kind of harmonic content you need out of that bass. Because if you start blending it, especially with rock guitars, which are, you know, harmonic content times a billion, you can really, you really have to. Or another way of looking at it, with, to, to cut through, I mean, another way to look at it is the guitars are already just raw. And so you can kind of get away with a lot more. And yeah, look at it however you want. All right, guys. Thanks. Bye.